What's up everyone, my name is David Wilder and I'm a landscape and wildlife photographer out here in the beautiful Canadian Rockies. I've teamed up with B&H to bring you my top five tips for respectful wildlife photography. So let's check them out. All right, let's start things off with tip number one and that's to use a telephoto lens. When it comes to wildlife photography, we want to give them space and respect their habitat. We want to impact them as little as possible. The photos you see in magazines and from your favorite photographers are likely shot on a telephoto lens. Who knows when that animal last hunted and had a meal, and we don't want to be the thing that prevents them from catching the next one. Could be devastating. So a telephoto lens allows you to stay far away, but get those close-up shots that you love. Now they come in all sorts of sizes, all sorts of budgets. They even go from zoom lenses to fixed focal lengths. Like the Sony 200 to 600 allows me to change my focal length and get different compositions. A fixed prime focal length can give you more light in those darker situations. They both have their merits and their drawbacks. Do a little research to find your favorite lens. All right, tip number two is do your research. Everything from photo technique all the way to about the animal you want to photograph. We want to know what its habitat's like. What is its daily habit like? Uh, how about its uh, mating season? And even uh, what a stressed or relaxed wild animal looks like. This allows you to keep that animal safe yourself safe and know where to be for those photos. As an example, out here in the fall in the Rockies, our elk go through rut season where the males get really aggressive. So you wanna make sure that you're extra cautious around them as well. It gives you that opportunity to see them fight over the harem, which is pretty cool to see. All right, let's talk tip number three, which is less is more. What do I mean? I mean less sound, less motion, and less scent. Wild animals, their senses are extraordinarily more sensitive than our own. And they can hear things, smell things, and see things from much farther away than we can. So first, if you have a camera that supports silent shutter, use it. That'll allow you to take those shots and not disrupt those moments where the animal might look up because it hears the clacking of your shutter. Less motion, the best thing you can do is blend into the background using camouflage or an improvised blind to be able to sit back and let the animal move around and become more natural. If you're moving around, it's gonna look at you more than doing what it wants to do. And as a helpful tip, as little scented fragrances on you as possible. When I was in the Great Bear Rainforest photographing grizzlies hunting salmon, our guides told us not to wear anything with a scent. And that included bug spray. There's some wolf tracks next to my footprint. Big boy. Just missed it. Tip number four is to hire a guide. During your research, you might find that you actually need a guide to go to certain areas or to see a certain animal, which think of it as a good thing because these guys are often always around these animals and that way they can get you in the spots that you need to get the right shot and they also know what a relaxed animal looks like or what a stressed out one looks like and so this keeps you safe and it keeps them safe whether it's safaris in Africa or polar bears in Canada guides are a great way to make sure you get your dream photo All right, last but not least, tip number five, and that's keeping things steady. With long lenses, it's really easy to introduce camera movement, shake, uh, because of their weight and their focal length, it gets amplified really easily. So I use a tripod or a monopod to fight that. Tripods allow me to anchor myself down and not introduce any of that motion, but it also slows me down so I don't disturb the animal. Using a gimbal allows you to move the camera around nice and fluidly, but also keep it at drastic angles if you're shooting an animal up in a tree. If you want to go handheld, definitely do it, but there's some things that you can do to help. For instance, keeping your elbows in, not out, making sure that you use your face pressed up against the camera, sort of like a three-point system, like the tripod. And um, using anything around you, like a tree to lean on, or a rock, or a, a, a stump, these things allow you to create some extra stability.
So that wraps up my top five tips for respectful wildlife photography. I hope these tips help you capture shots that you've been dreaming of. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. And I want to say thank you to B&H for allowing me to bring these tips to you. Now, if you want to check out some more of my work, prints, and workshops, check out my website, davidwilder.ca, or any of my social media like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, all of them. Uh, it's at David Wilder Photo. Take care.